I'm just going to do like a, a really informal recap. There are certainly business lessons to be had in this because I feel like a lot of why I had such a great experience was because of that. So I want to talk through a lot of that. Um, but also I'm, you know, just here to, here to kind of like catch up with y'all and say hi. So if there's any questions you were curious about or wanted me to answer, I'm happy to be like an open book, anything um, you could possibly want to know, feel free to ask. Um, but I'll kind of just like walk you through a little bit of the process. So, um, oh, six more weeks. So good, Lindsay, enjoy. Um, it's really interesting because I feel like I loved maternity leave. So I guess we could just start there. Love, love, loved it. But I do feel like now being back more, I feel like like the best way I can describe it is like, I enjoyed that time so much, but I definitely feel like I'm like my best self when I'm doing both, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's, that's totally part of it. Um, did I change my background? Oh no, but I got this new thing. I got this. She's new. <laughs> my willow is new, but the rest is the same. Um, oh, where's the cute baby? Oh, let me see if he can make an appearance. So Kenny's on, um, paternity leave right now. Um, so let me see, can Bennett come say hi? We can we can ask, um, which is amazing. So we kind of like, um, uh, space that out where, um, I had, you know, April, May, June, and I'm part-time in July. And then Kenny took his paternity leave, which his company gives him for July, which is amazing. So it's been really, really nice to kind of be able to ease back in, but also have him home. Um, just feels so much easier. Oh, Hugo. Hi, Hugo. Or hi, I'm Louise. I should say hi to you too, but you know, I'm like Hugo's biggest fan. Um, hi, Julia. Okay. Yeah. I'll have, I'll have Bennett come say hi. Um, but yeah, it's been a beautiful experience. So basically what happened was on April 4th, I had a mastermind call with my, with my millionaire makers, mastermind girls, totally fine. Went to like a routine appointment. Um, and the, um, they had to do, um, these like, they're called like non-stress tests. Um, so they basically just like monitor your baby and, um, Bennett wasn't like having the reactions that they wanted him to have. And then, um, they checked me and, felt like I was dilated enough that I should be induced that day because of both of those things. Um, so yeah, I, um, was not expecting that in the least, like we had an induction date scheduled for the next week. So I was planning to like work that whole week. I took calls that morning. I had calls that afternoon. Um, Kenny was going to come with me to the appointment and, um, I was like, Oh, don't worry about it. Like it's so, it's so routine. I don't think it matters. So he ended up scheduling a dentist appointment. So it was just a lot and they wouldn't let me go home. So I kind of went, when I went to the appointment, they decided I need to be induced that day. They were like not available for me to, <laughs> to go home. I had to go right to the hospital. So it was a little bit of a whirlwind and it was a whirlwind in terms of like, I had a full week kind of like booked that week. Um, but here's what I want to share about that and why I wanted to share that part and not start to maternity leave. Yeah. Very familiar with that SDs. Um, they're, they're like, they're fine, but it just was like, I just wasn't expecting it to be like anything. Um, but what was so nice about that is that we had contingency plans kind of for that. And I think that looking back, that's something I'm really, really grateful for. Like I, knew I had another mastermind call later in the week. And so I had already reached out to someone to say like, Hey, can you host this call? If by chance I go into labor, even though like, I don't intend to, like I have an induction scheduled, all that kind of stuff, but it was, you know, my team knew like, here's what plan B is. <laughs> if I don't make it to my date, all that kind of stuff. So just like really helpful to, to have had that in place. And I would just so recommend that to anyone that is having maternity leave or even just like has something going on where they're not sure like when they're going to need time off or whatever, like just have those plans in place with your team. Even if like having plans in place for when you get ill, I think is so, so helpful. Um, so that you're not scrambling when situations are tough like that, right? Like I wasn't like, like totally freaking out because I knew we had 
already worked through the plan for that. I obviously was freaking out a little bit because I was not expecting it, but like the worry in my head wasn't like, Oh, what, what about the business or what are we going to do with this call or this thing? Like that worry wasn't there at all. And I'm so grateful for that. Hi guys. Yeah. So predictable. They just, you know, uh, our us uh, high high performers, high achievers, kind of like type A ish humans, just love their unpredictability, right? Hi Jen, hi Kristen. Oh, it's so so good to see y'all. Oh, before I forget, um, giveaway for today. I don't want to forget that. So um, we're giving away a million her bundle. So if you want that, obviously just comment. You don't have to comment and say you want it or anything, but just any comment um, gets you entered to win. It is. I think the like most like um what's it called um comprehensive bundle that we have um goes through everything regarding mindset strategy and execution has a lot of coaching videos extra trainings that kind of thing so any comment you are entered to win just as a thank you for being here hey virginia oh thank you it's it's definitely different right now yeah it's um it's crazy because it feels like you know nothing has changed and everything has changed, right? Um, so yeah, so takeaway number one that I wanted to share about like the maternity leave stuff, but again, applies to like anything else is make sure you have other plans and make sure your team knows what they are, right? Like even if like you had got sick today or like needed time off or had something happen in your family or whatever that might be, I think just like having that in place with your team where it's like, yes, we don't want to like plan for something we don't want to have happen, but at the same time, like life happens and things happen. And so when you can have that set up and in place, it makes it so you can navigate those situations with so much more ease. And I think sometimes when business feels hard is because we don't have things like that set up. And so it feels so hard to navigate when things like that come up, you know, right. We're like, oh my gosh, like I can't even take, you know, sick time for my business. It's so heavy to like, is that true? Or have you just not set up a plan for what it would be like if you had to like on the fly, take time off. So that's something that I really feel like served me so, so well, and just would really encourage everyone to have in your business is like, what's your plan B for when stuff has to happen or an emergency happens or whatever. So not because your clients aren't going to be okay or whatever. Like everyone was completely fine, but more so I could be okay. Right. Because the last thing I needed to be worried about when they're like, Hey, this NST doesn't look how we want it to look, go to the hospital. Like the last thing I wanted to be like, was like, well, what about that call on Friday? You know what I mean? So it was really nice not having to do that. Hi teacher. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Pinola. Hi, Amanda. Katie says, this has been a new mindset for me this year. I don't have to take 10 steps back in my biz every time something with my family comes up and shakes us. Exactly. And like, yes, that requires planning and forethought, but it's so worth it. Like I, I I have so much to say on that, but after this break, like all of the planning that we put into this was the most useful thing I could have possibly done. And I want to talk about that a little bit because it made this such a beautiful, seamless process. Um, and just could not have felt better because of all that planning. It's not like, because I have a business model that's right for it, or because like I have just have really great clients or whatever, like all of those things are, are true. Although I guess my, I would say my business model, like doesn't seem like it's built for time off at all. And I do have really great clients, but ultimately the reason this went so well is because I had really, really, really great systems and planning set up in advance. Um, okay. So if you guys have questions for me that you want me to answer to let me know, cause I'm always happy to do that, but I'll just like go through some points that I thought about. Um, like one of the questions, a lot of my clients have asked me that I'll share with all of you is like, just what did it feel like to have all that time off? Um, and it was super weird. Cause like, obviously I haven't um, taken that much time off from working basically ever, um, literally ever, (laughs) um, since, you know, whatever I started working in high school. So, um, it was really kind of, uh, beautiful. And I think like that is important to say, because I think if you guys have followed me for any length of time, you know, I love my business and I love my clients so much. And I feel like it's really good to hear from someone who loves showing up how good it feels to not show up sometimes too. 
Um, because I think we have to normalize all of that. Like you can love your business more than anything and still want like the time away, just just same with kids. Like you can love your kid more than anything. And it feels good to have a little break, you know? And I think that that has been so helpful for me to realize and to, to like take in, because what I think our minds can do to us is like, oh, if the time off feels really good, does that mean I've built the wrong business? Does that mean something's wrong? Does that mean like the business doesn't feel how it should? No. Right. <laughs> Emma, that is, I mean, fair. Emma's calling me out because it's fucking true. It wasn't like real time off because you have birth, right? And they have like nonstop needs. So yes, very, very fucking fair. <laughs> Lindsay says, I want to know how it felt coming back and how are you balancing that new normal? Okay, great. I'm totally going to answer that. That's so funny, Emma. You're so right. I, I have to be careful like the language there because like, yeah, time off is relative. Um, but totally, like I think that it's just so helpful to, to see that you can absolutely love it and absolutely like do so well with the downtime. Like for me, having that space from the business felt really good. Like there wasn't really a time where I was like, oh my gosh, is everyone okay? Is it fine that I'm off? Is anyone mad that I'm off? Like that really didn't come up for me. It felt like I'm supposed to be off right now. And this is really, really good. And I really trust my clients that they're so capable and so able to handle things and they did right so um it felt really good like I think you know part of me wondered if I was going to feel like really like a big pull to like be working and checking stuff or part of me wondered if I'd like find ways to to work and stuff and I really didn't I was like I'm good right um you know, certainly I, I had some touch points with the business and with clients and stuff, but otherwise I really, really took the time and I really didn't feel bad about it. And I'm so happy that that's how that went. Um, okay, Katie, I got that one. Um, Jess says I've started distinguishing it as time out of the biz as a parent rather than time off. Isn't that so true? That's a good way to say it. Actually. I like that. Um, Virginia said, I think your words are always so comforting and confirming that certain feelings are just normal when you're in downtime. I was sick quite often these last few months and you really deal with this inner struggle. Exactly. And then like, it's just too easy to get in your head and be like, wait, because I really like this time off, like, should I stop? Or like, you know what I mean? And for me, I was like, I love this time off. Like spending that much time with Bennett 24 seven was like the funnest. And like, I don't want to do that forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, and I think just like having it all be okay is really important. Um, another piece that I want to just talk about is like the, the support I felt from my team while I was away. Um, I felt so supported while I was gone. I felt like things went exactly as I wanted them to. I felt like things were happening how I wanted them to. And the thing I really want to attribute to that is like, yes, we have a really amazing team, but what we really did was plan for it for a long time. I feel like I stressed this a lot before I went on maternity leave, but I now coming out the other side of it, I almost want to stress it even more, which is like, you can have anything you want in your business, but most of it requires systems and planning. And I know that's kind of like the not sexy thing, but it's the true thing. Like most people would say like, oh, you have a one-on-one business. You can't take basically four months off. Um, yeah, you can. Or, you know, you have a one-on-one business. You can't just like come back to work part-time for a month. Yeah, you can. Like you can do all of that. It just doesn't look like I snap my fingers and it happens. It looks like we spent a lot of time getting set up for that. And I feel like that is so important to say and normalize because sometimes what I think we hear is like, oh, I just took all this time off and it was amazing. And it was so great. And like everything worked perfectly done the end and like, good for you. Let's celebrate that. But the truth, truth is that there probably was like this much on the back end, right. That made all of that occur. Um, right. Yeah. Katie, totally. Can we just make that a sexy thing? Exactly. Planning and getting organized seems so unsexy, but the effects of it are actually super sexy. Exactly. Like having that time and feeling insanely supported, not stressed, not worried about the business, not worried about clients. Like that is like, I mean, in, in all seriousness, that is like some of the most priceless time of my life, right? Like I probably will 
always look back on that time and be like that that was like just a peak moment you know and I got that because of the planning so it actually is really sexy like I can't imagine like I've I've literally thought about this but like I can't imagine if I hadn't done that and you know I'm like up at 3 a.m feeding a baby stressing (laughs) about all this shit that's not happening in my business. And like, if I'm going to like come back to things being a mess or like, if I'm going to still have clients or whatever, like that would have stolen, stolen, (laughs) stolen. Apparently baby brain is real, stolen so much joy from that time. And it would have been for no reason, except that I didn't set myself up or plan for it. And so I think we just have to see that in business is like, we're going to kind of spend the time and energy either way. It's just going to be, am I spending it on the front end, really planning, setting up systems, getting organized, all that kind of stuff. Or am I going to spend it on the back end, stressing and worrying and being reactive and all of that kind of stuff. Like you're going to spend the time one way or another, and, and you just have to decide where you want to spend it. And I think based on that, it's obviously a no brainer. So whether that's like a long piece of time off you want in your business or whatever, it's so freaking doable. Like even just doing this, I realize like I have so many more options than I've even put on the table for myself. Like, so for example, I'm, I'm only about part-time this month. Um, so all my clients typically get about three calls with me a month and everybody's just doing one. Um, but like, I could do that again. You know, I, I, I think it just, it opens up opportunities and options for you to see, like, I'm not saying I'm going to do it next week, but like, you know, say, say, look, just as an example, say Christmas is my favorite. So say in December, I want to be like, oh, I'm only going to do part-time this month. I could say to clients like, Hey, here's an option for you. If you want to just do one call with me a month, here's what that looks like. Do you want to take it? Because a lot of my clients want downtime in that month too. Like, It just like opened my eyes to like, there are so many ways to run a business however we want. It's just, are we willing to ask for what we want and are we willing to plan for it? So I had to be willing to say to clients, hey, I only want to work part-time in July because I need like a slow lead in. Is that cool? Everybody's cool with it, right? And I had to be willing to like deal with all of the kind of like pain in the ass stuff that comes with that in terms of like changing invoicing, getting everyone set up for one call, scheduling, all that kind of stuff. But like, I didn't even have to deal with most of that. I just had to be willing to like have my team deal with it and to obviously pay the expense of dealing with that. But I think it's just so helpful to see that most of the stories we tell ourselves about business aren't true. Like I could never take time off. I could never work part-time, whatever. Like none of those are real or true. It's just so easy to manufacture these stories. What's true is I can have anything I want in my business. It just might require more planning and organization, but is that worth it? So I really thought that was like an important point to share because I think that again, it's so easy to tell ourselves other stories than that. And the truth is it's really, really not a thing. It's really easy to get what you want in your business. If you're willing to put the forethought into that. Um, okay. I would love to know what, what part-time looked like for you. Okay, cool. I'm going to put that. I have, I'm like grabbing these so I don't forget them. Um, yes, exactly. Emily, there are so many options for flexibility, but they can feel scary until you actually try them. Right. Not only can they feel scary, they can just even feel like a non-option. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that you know, most people would look at a one-on-one business model and say it's a non-option to basically take four months off. And it's not, it's just like, you kind of have to like be bold enough to ask for that. Um, and it's kind of amazing how people want to show up and support you in that. So, um, all right, what else did I want to share? Um, okay. Another thing that I wanted to share was just how, like getting back into it, my clients are good. Like, I I think it's so important to say that too, because I feel like, especially, um, with one-on-one, but I think in general, it can feel like, oh, but like, no, my clients need me. Right. And I am certainly someone who gets fulfillment from feeling like really, um, impactful and like, I'm doing work that matters and like, I'm really, um, needed in some ways, but it's been so beautiful to be like, they were fine. And like to own that, even like 
from a oh there's a baby here mm. hi do you want to say hi to all my friends mm. do you want to say hi to all my friends hi guys this is Bennett mm. hi Bennett he's like what in the world is this so this is him he's the best baby ever i feel so so lucky he sleeps so well thank god i feel like i should knock on like 50 pieces of wood saying that but this is him say hi oh he loves to pull on hair favorite pastime i need to buy hair clips because this is not going well with all my hair loss but yeah he's so cute right hi okay i'm gonna go back to dead thanks for saying hi to all my friends here you go. <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, he's so cute. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard me talk about this, but I did not know for the longest time if I wanted to be a mom and was just really on the fence. But side note, apart from, from the business aspect of it, this has been like the coolest thing I've ever done. I'm so, so, so glad I did it. So glad. Just absolutely love it 100 times more than I thought I would. Um, Oh yeah, the cheeks are real big. The cheeks are huge. Uh, I know, Katie. They like. Luckily, I've had had girlfriends tell me that, but like, yeah, it's. I feel like even if people warn you, you like can't be prepared for like just doing this and being like, oh, oh, there's a clump of hair in my hand. So there, yeah, there's that. Okay, um, but yeah, it has just been the the best thing in the whole world. It's so much, so much better than I expected. Um, but also caveat, he is a pretty easy baby. So I'm sure that has a lot, <laughs> a lot to do with my, you know, love of uh, all things mamahood so far, but yeah, it has been so good. Um, okay. What was I talking about? Oh yeah. So, so my clients are good. And I think like, you know, we have to almost like accept that even from an ego standpoint to a certain extent, right? Like I had to ask myself, like, would I feel better coming back, having everyone be like, oh my God, you know, shit's on fire. Thank God you're back. Or would I rather come back having everyone be like, oh my gosh, I missed you so much, but like, here are all the wins I've had. Like, that's a big difference, you know? And I, I really want to feel like I want to come back here and, oh my gosh, here are all the wins. Not that anybody can't have a challenge, but like, I don't want them to like have to have a challenge so I feel necessary. Do you know what I mean? And so it's been really, really cool to come back and see that like everyone really did an incredible job of like navigating through things and that's beautiful, right? Um, so just wanted to share that because I think sometimes it's easy to get in our heads and just feel like my clients wouldn't be okay and they're gonna be okay. They really are. Ooh, you have a hack for the hair loss. Okay. I need to know that immediately before I lose more. So please tell me <laughs> before I pull out another chunk. Um, thank you, Jess. Um, but yeah, so I think like, it's just, it's noticing that duality where there's like a part of you that wants to be like, no, my clients would definitely not be okay. And then there's, you know, this, this better part of you to be like, no, like that's what we've been preparing for is for them to feel like CEOs, for them to feel empowered, for them to feel good about their decisions. Like that's the thing. And it's like so cool to see like them uh, playing that out. Do you know what I mean? Um, yes, it is. It's so cool to discover there. Okay. How do you, how did you do client payments while on mat leave? So um, again, this is sort of one of those things where it just takes planning and it takes being able to kind of like reimagine what things look like. So what we did for April, so clients pay a, a, the percentage, right? But they pay it like the month after. So for April, I was getting paid for March percentage. So that was totally normal because obviously I worked a full month in March. And then um, for April, we just pro um, prorated percentages for the following month based on how long I worked. So I only worked five days. So we only took that percentage of a client's revenue that month, right? Um, and then for July, we're back to normal percentages, like moving forward. Um, but for this month, everyone that's only getting one session is paying a prorated base rate. Um, so 
that's what we're doing there. And then for the months in between for like um, May, I got the, the um, prorated April percentage for June, nothing for July prorated base rate. Right. I know that sounds kind of complicated. We did like a lot of, um, hi, Lucy. We did a lot of um, client education on that because obviously like we wanted to make sure everyone felt really com comfortable and confident with that. But um, yeah, that's what we did. And what I have been saying about that, and we'll say again, because I just want to shout this from the fucking rooftops is like, I will just make less money because of it. Like I saved up for it. There were like, obviously April, May, June, July, um, four months where I'm either not getting a payment or getting like a very, very prorated payment. And so not only is that going to affect me for those four months, but it's going to affect whatever my yearly total is, all of that kind of stuff. However, I think what happens in, in our space that is so damaging is that it's like, you shouldn't lose out on money because you had a kid. Like there's almost this way of like, it's, it's like on a pedestal. If you find a way to like go on maternity leave and have a baby and still make just as much money. And like, I'm down with that. Like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I think that the fact that it seems so much better than, than not is, is really hard. Just like corporate, I think is the opposite where it's basically just like, you should assume you're going to make less money if you have a baby. Right. And I think the, the, win for us is to really be like, you should do whatever the fuck feels good to you. And for me, like, I know I could have set my business up in a way where I didn't lose money over that time frame, but I didn't want to, like, I wanted to feel completely unplugged. I didn't want to have to like come up with other things or like, I didn't want my planning to be focused on like, how do I make that revenue up? So I can still say I made X amount of money this year. Like I wanted to be focused on like, how do I totally unplug and get time with my son. And so, um, I think it's just really important to normalize that. Like, you, like if the, the best thing your business can give you, the best thing your business can give you is the freedom to, to make those choices. Right. I think our space sometimes gets really, 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 uh, out of whack in terms of like, it's like the, the next thing that, you know, someone's buying or the, like that trip they're showing or that bag they just purchased and like all of that's cool. Like your business can give you all of that. Like, I think that's amazing. It's like follow your desires. Right. But I think it puts so much pressure on people where it's like the business should be constantly producing more money so I can do and buy more things. And like that to me is not the vibe. Like think the business should be giving me freedom is like what I really feel focused on. And like the fact that I had like the, the, you know, time and monetary freedom to take that time to be with my family is the best thing I could ever imagine. And I think sometimes we just have to get back to thinking about that. And so if it means that I lose out on a few months of, of income because I got that, the fact that I even have the ability to lose out on a few months of income is an absolute privilege, you know? And so I think, you know, more than anything, this time too has just given me so much perspective on like what's important and what our businesses can ultimately do for us that doesn't have to look like that grind. Do you know what I mean? Um, Ah, uh, thank you, Julia. Virginia says, is your sales group program also going to these topics um, to build a structure and create order in scheduling? Mm, no, not really. We don't really talk about scheduling or anything like that. Um, it's, it's very sales focused. It's really not about structure or scheduling, unfortunately. Um, but let me know uh, kind of what you're looking for there, Virginia. And maybe um, my OBM Megan even has some stuff around structure and scheduling. So let me know and see if she can um, help with anything there too. But um, yeah, I, I was going to talk about this later, but I'll just kind of mention it now because I think it's so important. But like that perspective, I think, I think I've always had really good perspective. I've never like been one to kind of like chase the, chase the money for the sake of it in business. But yeah. Um, Th this just totally renewed that kind of like vigor in me to be like, our business does not have to be about like, you know, how can I just like always keep up this revenue and always make more the next month and always like, you know, get that next thing. Like when our business is about like 
wow, it fully supports me in, in like having time with the people that matter to me. Like that is everything, you know, when it fully, even like, I mean, just, just to say like, you know, the fact that like, I could easily say, I don't want to have to figure out how to build another program that makes us money while I'm out. I just want to take the time is such a gift. And so I think we have to kind of start normalizing that those are some of the really incredible wins in business. And it doesn't always have to look like, you know, every new big thing. Like first of our industry, it was like 5k months were like incredible. Then it was like 10k months. People were like, was the new thing Then it was like a hundred K months. And it's like million dollar months. Like it's always getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think that's cool in some regard. Like I love that we're always stretching and expanding capacity and stuff like that. And I think it can be really harmful and make you make choices that maybe aren't the most aligned for like you or your family or your life because you're trying to hit that milestone or marker. So that is my rant there. Um, what else did I want to share? Let me answer some of your questions actually. And then I'll, I'll go back to my thing. Um, okay. So I want to know what it's felt like coming back and how you are balancing the new normal. Um, okay. So it's felt really good being back. Um, like I said, I, I loved having that time, but I don't think I am, um, going to thrive the most having that 24 seven. Like I love being with Bennett like so much, but I really, you know, luckily have found the work that I feel super, super, super passionate around and connected to. And so I think I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't, um, come back to that. So I feel like what I've realized in, in coming back is like, this is when I'm really my best self, I think is when I'm doing the mom thing as much as I can, you know, in, in between this, like the second I'm off this, like I'm going to be with him, you know, I'm going to have as much time with him as I possibly can. And doing the business thing lights me up and makes me so much better. So it's been really nice to see that, but I will also say, um, transitioning back in part-time was really a very smart move, I think, because, um, it really was a, a initially like a mind fuck for me to go from like caring for him 24 seven for three months, basically. Not that I didn't have help. My husband is incredibly supportive, but you know what I mean? Like that was my full focus for, for three months to kind of like let go of the reins on that was definitely a mind fuck at first. Um, so, ah, thank you, Lucy. Yes. This is the way I am my best self. Yes. And so great for kids to see their parents living their lives. It's so true, Emma. Oh, loving their lives. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but it was definitely, definitely hard for me to kind of be like, oh, someone else is going to like do more of these things. So I feel like for me personally, having that transitional period and where like the person doing those things is still Kenny has helped me a lot. Like, I think I avoided a lot of anxiety that way. And so we have a full-time nanny starting next month. Um, and I feel much more emotionally, physically, like systems wise, et cetera, prepared for her to start than I think I would have if that had happened this month. So for me, that, that slow transition has really meant a lot. And again, it's been like easier to kind of have like, like time away from him. That's really short. You know, like today I had a mastermind call this morning. I have this right now. And then I have one call later today, the rest of the day I'm, you know, with him. And so it's nice because it doesn't feel like, Oh, you're done. Do you know what I mean? It's just felt really good to be like, okay, this is like, we're, we're kind of building back up. Hi, Maggie. So good to see you. Um, and this is mom, mom guilt mindset. Any other insights on your process? You know, it's so funny because I don't necessarily, I mean, this, this is maybe not the, the right way to say it, but I, I don't feel a lot of guilt because I feel like I know that what I'm doing is best for him and best for our family. What I feel is a lot of um, what's the word I want to use? Like it, for me, it feels like it's almost more my own stuff. Like it feels more like, well, I, I really just like being with him. Like it's really enjoyable for me to be with him. So like, it almost feels like I have to see it as my thing instead of being about him. And that's really helped me in my process. Like when I feel like, 
oh, he needs me to be with him. Like that could work me up a lot. And what I've really felt is like, it's, he doesn't, like he has an amazing father. His nanny is fantastic. Like he really doesn't need me to be there 24 seven, but I have my own work to do around the fact that like, I really enjoy it and I want to be. So like, how am I balancing that? So I don't know. That's the only thing I've kind of come up with so far is like looking at it as kind of my own thing versus like a, a, a him thing has just helped my my brain like tremendously but you know that's just where I am right now I'm sure there's like a ton more to process around that too um Elisa says I listened to an old happy thoughts episode yesterday also cool thank you where you were talking about how your thing is always control so I'm sure this can show up so quickly in regards to Bennett too the one thing I will say I'm <laughs> so thankful that I was on the fence um with having kids for so long, because I think I really needed to work on all my control shit before, because I can, I've thought so many times how differently this would feel and be had I not um, worked through some of that. Um, because I think it would be so hard because kids are like the least controllable thing in the world, I think probably, I'm sure a lot of you would co-sign that. Um, and I just, I already like know my tools and I've already been working on that for so long that it's been easier here and it's been easier to spot it when it's coming up. Like, um, <laughs> um, you know, even like when, when Kenny and I kind of made that transition to like, okay, Kenny's on paternity leave now. So he has him like a little bit more than I do, whatever. Like, I just felt all of that bubble up pretty, pretty intensely, but I just knew what it was. And I knew that it wasn't that I was worried about Kenny or I didn't trust Kenny or any of those things. I knew it was just like, this is my stuff. So it was like much easier to work through. It's kind of what we always used to talk about on happy thoughts is like, I know my thing. So it's easier to spot and I have been working on it for a really long time. So it's easier to move through. And I've really felt that, um, in this process, like, it's just been so easy for me to be like, Oh, that's that this is what's happening. And I think that's why I've enjoyed him so much because again it doesn't feel like it's about him if that makes sense like that continues to be my mindset is like when I'm stressed it's not about Bennett it's like because I have control stuff I need to work on or like when I'm stressed it's not um like about you know the fact that I like am guilty that I'm not with him it's like my own thing you know that's just really helped me um Ah, uh, thank you, Katie. Yes, I think it really matters to have a great mindset. Maggie says, so happy you don't feel a lot of guilt. Mom guilt is a symptom of internalized patriarchy, and it's so good to hear you talk about your experience. Ah, that's a great way to look at it. That totally makes sense, actually. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, ah, uh, thank you, Lisa. Um, I think aging parents are the least controllable things on the planet. I, I very much would imagine that that's true, Deepa. Um, All right, so the next question I had was, will your schedule change as much um, as much as you get back to full-time, will full-time look the same? Um, full-time will not look exactly the same. No, I've definitely taken on a little bit less for sure. And Megan and I have worked really, really hard to get my schedule, like as streamlined as humanly possible, basically. Um, so it will still look like, you know, I'm like, you know, working with clients really consistently and stuff like that, but it will be a little bit less. Um, it, it'll look like about, mm, I'm trying to think on average, probably like maybe 10 hours less per week than I was doing before, just in terms of like stuff I've cut out, you know, things like that. Um, so we'll see. I mean, that's, that's kind of like the plan for now, but, um, yeah, it will look a little bit different. Uh, thank you, Tristan. I'm so happy to be back too. I so, so appreciate that. It's good to see you. Hi, Shari. Oh, it's so good to see you too. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, but, and I think this is just important to say, I feel like I'll probably do another live stream to talk about this because it feels really important to you, but I will have a full-time nanny. And I think it, I just want to keep saying that because I feel like this expectation that like we should be able to do it all. And there's almost like some badge of honor or something. If you're figuring out how to be a full-time mom and a business owner at the same time and stuff like that, like, if you want to do that, like more power to you, by all means, like, I'm not saying that that's not cool, but like, again, it's the stuff that we pedestal and like, 
I, to me, I don't see how I would ever make that choice because I don't want to be spread that thin. Um, and again, there's nothing wrong with that choice, but I think it's just important for me to always be like really, really transparent with you guys that I'm not coming on here and being like, everything's great. It's all great. Da, da, da. And meanwhile, like it's great because I have a shitload of help. So yes, it's, it's good. But anyway, like, yeah, we're going to have a crap ton of help. Um, so like that will be possible. And for me, like that, that feels really important because, you know, like the kind of beautiful thing about this business I get to work from home. And so we have a full-time nanny coming to our house. So I'll be able to see him a ton throughout the day, but it won't just be on me throughout the day. Like, it'll be more like, oh, I can go see him and play with him for 20 minutes and like, you know, do different things or take a walk with him or whatever. But there's somebody that's like waiting, like to be in charge of him. It's not like me being like running from this to that. So I just wanted to share that because I think like nobody can do all of this stuff on their own. Like I had a great maternity leave because I had a great team. I have had a great motherhood experience because I've had a lot of support in motherhood. And so it's not just me. It's much bigger than that. Um, oh, hey, Steffi. Lindsay says, will you ever be taking new clients again? Yes. I really, really want to and plan on it. Yes. Hmm. Um, Shari says, I'm joining late. So if you already answered, feel free to skip. Where are you choosing to trim the fat, so to speak, in your business to reduce hours? Um, I mean, really just in terms of like stuff that I like don't need to be like creating or doing. Um, there are so many like just small things that I liked to do before. Like one of the things I've preached loving to do for years is like I put all my own posts in the Facebook group because I like feeling really connected to that content. That's always felt really, really great to me. And I loved that until now where... I'm not doing it anymore. My team is doing it. It's still the same content. It's still going to serve people in the same way, but it's just not going to be me posting it every day. And like, there's other ways I can feel connected to that. Um, so just a lot of little things like that. Um, you know, I had planned on doing a personal podcast um, before all of this, all of this being like baby maternity leave, et cetera. Um, and have chosen not to like just, just some stuff where like, it would be amazing and I would like it and no, um, like obviously we stopped happy thoughts last year when I was pregnant. That's not, you know, the, the totality of the reason, but like, there are just a lot of ways that things have kind of gotten trimmed down. Um, and you know, I haven't, I haven't filled client spots in a while. Um, I was taking a few more intensives, um, before maternity leave than I will be now. So just small things like that, that kind of all really add up. Um, Diva says, great point. I always had a full-time nanny live in or live out. They're my lifelong friends and support. Oh, I love hearing that Diva. That is like what I've been praying for every day that that's what it turns into. Um, Katie says, that's the best. When mine were babies, they were in daycare at the school where I taught and I was able to go nurse them and spend time between classes. Oh, that's so perfect. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, Hey, Sarah, thank you. And you can do all this later. Newborn baby is temporary. Right. That's what I keep remembering too, is like, you know, there's, there's just seasons, right? There is a season where it made sense for me to have more podcasts and, um, intenses and all that. And I, and posts and all those things. And I loved that season. And like, there's a season where it makes less sense for me to do that. And I love this season. Like, you know, it's, it, it really is all over good if we make it right in our brains and it's not good if we make it feel bad. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the coaching podcast sessions, but also feel like I would love to hear more of your up close with these. Yeah. So it's, oh, thank you, Virginia. Yeah. I've thought about that too. Like I was going to do a separate personal one and I might just incorporate it into literally. So I need to think about that, but there's certainly an easier way for me to do that. Um, even when it doesn't feel like it, sometimes diapers are like hitting the first 10 K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. Next question was, would love to know what part-time looked like for you specifically. Sure. So all my clients, um, are basically on like one session a month. So obviously from three to one, that's significantly part-time. So I guess it's almost like a third time, right? Um, and everyone still has base camp access, um, to me this month, but basically I just cut out calls and I said no to pretty much anything else, you know, like I would normally say yes to like a podcast or, you know, um, any like additional things that might come up. I said no to all of those. And then I also, before I went on maternity leave, 
I pre-did everything for July. So like our client lessons, um, like our, um, our wait list questions, things like that, like all of those were, were done in advance. So basically the only thing I have to do this month is show up for one call per client and be in base camp. So it's felt really, really amazing to kind of be able to do that. And, you know, the nice thing about base camp is it's obviously there's no like one time I have to do it. It's super flexible. So when he's napping or whatever, it's really easy to do that. And then otherwise Kenny um, is here when he's on call. So that is what July has been looking like. And it's just been really, really nice to, to have that balance of both. Um, yeah, Emma says, I found the seasons change so much faster once kids are introduced into our lives. It's wild how fast you go through them. Oh, I bet. I can't even imagine. So, um, yeah, that is, is basically it. Let me see if I had anything else on my list that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I think that's it. If anybody has any other questions, let me know. Um, but otherwise this was so fun and I'm so glad we got to be back together. And remember if you comment, you're entered to win the million her bundle. Um, and yeah, I will be back. This was obviously kind of, kind of catch up, kind of, um, <laughs> some, some business advice, but I will be back every Monday from now on with a ton of, um, business conversations. I feel like I have so many ideas that have come up for me that I'm excited to share with y'all and just so, so happy to be back. Okay. Shari says, oh, oh wait, no. Emma says, how many one-on-one -on -one clients do you currently have? How many one -on -one clients? I honestly, Emma, I should know this, but I don't know this off the top of my head at the moment. 20 maybe. Hmm. I would really, I would really have to get back to you. <laughs> I know I should know. Megan would know. Um, but yeah, I think around that number. Um, Shari says, oh, where are we enhancing support in our regular life outside of the business or trimming like the full-time nanny and other shifts are, that are going to support this season? Yeah, totally. I mean, that those things are so huge for me, right? Like it's like, can we have our cleaning lady coming more? Can we have, you know, the nanny more? Kenny is on paternity leave. His schedule is super flexible with his work. So we're figuring all of that out. Like there is so much support around it that's making it easier. You know, like I don't, for example, like the, the cleaning um, person coming more often, like that feels really helpful because then I'm not spending time doing that. I'm spending it with him, you know? And so I think like, again, thinking about like, these are how our businesses can resource us to do those things. It doesn't always have to be through the business. I think that's really a whole other conversation. Um, but yeah, like sometimes I think we're like, how can the business do this thing for me? How can it make sure I make way more money and spend way less time and all that kind of stuff? And I think that's, that's good sometimes, but sometimes the question is like, how can the business resource me enough to get other support that lets me have that time back? And so that's a really important conversation as well. Mm. Thank you so much, Virginia and Elisa. So good to see you guys. You too, Shari. Um, yes, my parents are so obsessed with their first grandbaby. It's been so, so lovely. So I hope you guys have a beautiful week. I love you all. And it was so good to be back. And I can't wait to see you next week and definitely in the Facebook group way more. So I love y'all. Bye.